Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ciara, and please do remember, if you do not like what I say, how I say it, or why I say it, then please do feel free to click off this video and go about the rest of your day in peace. And so we are back again with another part in this uh, particular series of pick a cards that I'm doing, which is which male fictional character represents your soulmate. And so particularly we are talking about the fandom of, you know, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, although really it's kind of taking from multiple different uh, series within kind of that universe that Rick Riordan has created. Um, so we're dealing with different characters from across the different series. So think Percy Jackson Olympians, Heroes of Olympus, we also got Magnus Chase, you know, King Chronicles, like any of those characters from those various series could be popping up in this pick a card. And with that said, my only like PSA about this is again, we're using these characters as kind of a jumping off point to represent the characteristics of your soulmate. Do not in any way take the literal age of these characters as any indication of the actual age of your soulmate. Because again, pretty much for the mass majority throughout most of the books, these characters are underage. So <laughs> do not take that part literally again we're only using them as archetypal figures of personality traits for the most part that is what we're looking at here so with that said we have five piles here today so for pile one we have the optical calcite for pile two, we have blue calcite. For pile three, we have aqua calcite. For pile four, we have green calcite. And for pile five, we have emerald calcite. So do take as much time as you need to meditate on the piles. Use a pendulum if you want. And of course, I'm going to shout out that if you want more exclusive content and pick a card related things, podcasts, artwork. And if you're looking for a personal reading, please do check out my Patreon link down below because you'll get access to all of those fun goodies through Patreon. And it's a great way to help support this channel and its continued growth and the work that I do here. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and jump into these messages. All right. For those who chose pile one here with the optical calcite, we're going to go ahead and jump into your reading and see uh, which character you got to represent your soulmate. And so first up, we have you guys got Frank. So talking a little bit about Frank and uh, his personality, you know, so, and again, in relation to that, what your soulmate um, is like with their personality, they are a very kind person. You know, they're a very good friend and they're willing to give everyone a chance. You know, they could be extremely um, loyal, especially to friends and anybody that they care about very deeply. They're a very good listener, but on, because everybody has their good and their bad points. So kind of on a bad point, they can sometimes have a lot of anger and rage inside, especially, um after like experiencing some traumatic things. So sometimes it could be kind of an issue with your soulmate where it's like they, and I mean, this could be a trait also earlier on in their life before they've kind of mastered it and realized it, that they kind of hold back a lot when it comes to their anger and their rage and they don't kind of let it out in a healthy way. They more so kind of bottle it up. They can also be, have been very like self-conscious um, maybe due to bullying, you know, they could be very self-conscious in regards to their body because their body shape, they might have something, maybe they were like a little bit overweight or maybe there was something odd about their features when they were younger and they were picked on it, picked on for it. And so that could have led in some cases to like extreme self-hatred and low self-esteem, which they then have to work to overcome. Um, and as, as a result, they could have been, you know, very awkward and kind of nervous sometimes and also lead to kind of feelings of unworthiness 
in receiving praise or attention. But again, through trial and error and from learning from these experiences, they can grow their self-esteem to the point that they actually become extremely brave. They become a very powerful leader uh, through overcoming these things, you know, building up and improving and embracing their different aspects. And, you know, especially when they choose to work on themselves and the like body dysmorphia or whatever it could be that was like related to bullying from their childhood in regards to their body. Once they've learned to overcome, especially that, that is when they're going to blossom completely as far as their personality goes and take on that again, very brave. And in some cases like terrifying kind of leadership quality where it's like, you don't want to mess with this person because they just know how to hold their own and they don't back down. And sometimes they can even be a little reckless in their sense of self-sacrifice for the people that they care about and the people they're leading. So it's very much all about, again, learning to grow out of that low self-esteem to a leadership position. They also are going to definitely, your uh, soulmate is going to have a little bit of a nerdy side to them. So they might have kind of like a nerdy hobby that they really poured themselves into that they might be interested in. Uh, But overall, they're very, uh, again, giving and kind and very loyal to the people that they care about. So diving a little bit more into this, let's look at some of the... Uh, tarot cards that we have here. So we also have the Knight of Pentacles. We have the Keeper of Cups, which is like the Queen of Cups. We have the World card. Yes. Oh, yes. And we also have Temperance. So this makes a lot of sense. Also, just to call it your particular soulmate, might come from... um, mixed heritage, mixed genetics. Um, They could come from a foreign place. So particularly in the case of like Frank, for example, he's, you know, half Canadian, half Chinese. Um, So again, that's kind of a part of his identity and what he kind of goes through as a character. So your particular soulmate might have, um, again, that mixed heritage as well. That is very kind of important to them and something that they are learning to balance and embrace both aspects and um, learn to kind of go with that. They can be definitely very methodical, very careful, very grounded in general, but they're also extremely emotional too. They have this deeper emotional sense and sensitivity about them, but they're very explorative. They like to see the world and they can be a a master manifester for sure. Uh, Especially again, once they've worked through any issues with Again, I feel like there there needs to be a balance between how they express their emotions, how they nurture themselves. It could have even been in harsher cases for some of you with your soulmate where they lost their mother um, earlier on or at a certain point early in their life. And so it's like that nurturance of the feminine is something that they need to learn to embrace and embody in themselves. Let's see what else we also have here. So we also have... Uh, domination with Mars in Sagittarius. And we have, uh, interesting, we have Venus in Sagittarius as well. So yeah, they could definitely be, um, have a very strong amount of Sagittarius energy in their natal chart. And again, that makes a lot of sense with something like the world card here, because Sagittarius has to do with foreign cultures and foreign travel. So talking about the flirtation card, there is, when this card is selected a in a reading, a possibility of marriage or relationship with someone from another country. Often this comes through a meeting at a university or other learning institution. Women who choose this card usually seek a heroic, adventurous type of partner, a romantic Indiana Jones figure. So yes, definitely for you, your soulmate can have that kind of those qualities and they're definitely going to be formed from you they're at a distance right now most likely or again they come from a completely different cultural background from you so events here are a foreign lover or holiday romance that blossoms a marriage abroad a light-hearted flirtation just for the adventure which maybe that's how your relationship starts with your soulmate it starts off as kind of this like light flirtatious kind of interest but then it deeply 
you know, transforms into something more serious. And then, of course, we have Mars in Sag, which is when this card is chosen in a reading, it can mean, depending on the question asked, that either the questioner is being pressured by someone or is applying too much pressure to someone else. The domination card indicates a need to stand back and detach oneself in order to see the truth of the situation. I feel like with that domination card, it's like, yes, your soulmate can be very dominant sometimes. But also, I feel like more so this has to do with a life philosophy where it's like they themselves don't like injustice and like people being wrongly dominated, uh, especially for the wrong reasons. So particular events here is an argument over ideals, persuading others by bullying, the start of an expedition, reckless, um, excuse me, reckless optimism with regard to a long term project, competitive sports. So, yeah, they could definitely be very sporty or um, they could have an interest in a particular sport because um, I'm just going to mention with Frank in particular, he, you know, all these characters are basically like demigods. Um, his godly parent is Mars. So, yes, that makes a lot of sense with something like domination. Literally, you have Mars energy here. So that totally makes sense. So, yeah, they could definitely be interested in or they've done some sort of martial arts or something, again, sporty like that. I also feel like, yes, they can be have that reckless optimism and kind of try to see the best and everything, which definitely comes from that Queen of Cups energy. Um, and yes, I definitely get the sense that they don't like they don't like bullying from anybody because, again, they experience that a lot in their youth. So they very much are going to stand firm against that. So let's see what else we have for natal chart information. So we have um, Trine with Flow, harmonizes, aids, enriches, benefits, energizes, enjoys, eases, lubricates, gifts, rhymes, supports, and indulges. We also have Conjunction with Empowerment. Combines with, enhances, strengthens, joins, forces, activates, intensifies, authorizes, allies with, concentrates, saturates, overrides, and overwhelms. Especially with that leadership quality, I feel like they're very good with, like, again, flow, I feel like, is in relations more so with their, um, their inner emotions and how they need to flow with that and let it out when they need to in healthy ways. With empowerment, I feel like that's part of their leadership quality where they're very good at building that foundation and empowering others around them to be at their best as well. And we have uh, Libra with the idealist. So harmonizes, cooperative, balanced, socially aware, artistic, people pleasing, fair, idealistic, aesthetic, choosy, aspirational, geometric, graceful, considerate, obliging, incisive, judgmental, and flattery. So it's interesting, I just realized temperance is Sagittarius card. So that makes a lot of sense why that energy is coming out so strong. But yeah, they could also have strong Libra placements at well. They like beauty. This is also, I feel like, a bit of where like their flirtation comes from. They like to, again, please people. They're, again, that's where their kindness comes in. But they want to see everybody empowered and in harmony. And then they, again, they stand very firm against bullying and wrongful domination. So we also have here, representing them, we have the unicorn. Very magical, very potent, um, powerful energy here. So with the unicorn in particular, describing them. So, reconnecting to higher wisdom or divinity. It's difficult to see, hear, or think of a unicorn without immediately questioning if it's real. Did they ever exist? Perhaps long, long ago? The mind answers maybe, or it could be, or no way. This very contemplative ex uh, contemplation explains our relationship with divinity and encapsulates our wavering belief in the unicorn. We wonder what divinity is. We wonder where our intuition comes from and if we can really trust it. So I feel like your soulmate has had issues in the past where it's like um, they struggle to honestly trust their intuition because of that low self-esteem for sure. Um, so... 
Uh, we think about a higher power and our mind hesitates between yes, no, maybe. Is it male or female? Does it have a name? Is it just a feeling? The unicorn card appears and wakes us up to curiosity about higher self and the divine. It is a card of questioning, exploring, and contemplating the inexplicable. The mind's eye knows there is something beyond our day-to-day -day lives, a deeper dimension to our experiences. The mind's eye reaches and reaches and reaches out to grasp something more. You are the unicorn and you have begun your quest for the answers. So, yeah, and because we have so much Sagittarius, it's like they're definitely about questioning philosophies, religions, and this also stems from their own struggle with identity because of whatever, you know, cross heritage that they have, cross culture, um, kind of combinations of things where they've always kind of felt out of place um, wherever they may have been because, again, you know, they could have two different, completely different parents from different ethnicities or cultures and trying to find their own place within both of those cultures. Um, they could have struggled where it's like they thought they had to choose one and had to like reject the other in order to be accepted into that other one. But it's like, that's unfortunately, I just, I feel like they will come to a point of realization where they just cannot separate both worlds. They have to embrace and create a place for themselves that combines both, which is why they often have these questions and why they have this interest in exploring the world and learning from the experiences of, of others. Our next card is really interesting because, again, we have this Libra with the idealist and now we have the liberator. So, the attributes of feeling yourself and others, of freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns. Yes, the shadow attributes, of course, are imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate, ignoring legitimate constraints. So, yes, they very much embody this liberator, this leader aspect where they want to free others especially from situations of domination, but in their darkest aspects, you know, if it goes into like a negative place, they themselves can be, um, what is it, like the dictator. If they fall into their darker aspects, they can definitely fall into that. Um, but in, in their heart and their core, they are this liberator. They want to free everybody from things that are outmoded and no longer serve the greater good of humanity. They're very like entrepreneurial, I get the sense of as well. Like they know how to like work from the ground up. They they will work very hard. I feel like this is the kind of person that later on in life, for sure, it's like you wouldn't be surprised to learn that it's like, they started with very like lower paying jobs and they worked very, very hard until they like built their own kind of corporation or business of some sort. They're very, very steadfast in their dedication to their work and craft. So next up, we have the sixth chakra with Archangel Metatron here. So with this sixth chakra, coming out for their energy let's go ahead and get a little bit more detail here so obviously this is related to the clarity of thought the personal vision and the third eye chakra so they could have a very strong powerful third eye chakra which goes back to this unicorn with trusting the intuition so this very powerful archangel metatron brings brilliant indigo vibrations to your brow chakra or third eye which is the center devoted to insight and clear thought. When this card appears upright, it indicates a much greater clarity in your thought process and an expanded perspective toward broader horizons. So new perceptions are taking hold and the clouds of confusion are clearing. In some ways, this could be a new beginning for you're on your way to developing a deeper insight about what's going on in your life and why. Now is the time to focus on your personal vision. What do you want your life to look like in the years ahead? Create a clear picture of that and support it with your daily thoughts. The insights you need to create a vibrant life is available to you now. So I feel like this is actually something they're currently going through where 
yeah, they've gone through kind of like a little bit of an awakening. They're embracing more of their natural intuition and ability. And they really are starting to think and plan about their future, what they want their future to look like, who the kind of man that they want to be in the future and who they want to share their life with. So I wouldn't be surprised. Like I'm not getting a strong sense of like, you're going to necessarily meet this soulmate very soon. I mean, some of you could have already met them if this is resonating to somebody you already know, but I'm feeling like there is a little bit more time between your guys's coming together. But in part of that is because they're only now getting into this phase where they're thinking about that. And because they're starting to think about it, the power of their thoughts is what manifests their reality. And they're starting to realize that. And because now their mind is going to this place of like, who do I want to spend the rest of my life with? They're going to start calling you in more so. And so you guys are moving in the right direction towards your joining. Our last card here, because of course, since we're talking about demigod characters, I wanted to pull from the Gods and Titans deck. And it's really interesting what came out for this pile one, because we have set with chaos, which again, I think is very resonant actually with, and again, I'm not seeing set, you know, oftentimes when we see set, I think some people can take it as a very negative thing, but there is... Uh, necessity for chaos. Chaos can be a very um, rejuvenating process because through chaos, through some destruction is how you clear away the old of the unnecessary so that new can be birthed. And originally in um, parts of Egypt, you know, Set was a very powerful and positive figure. And then sadly things as like Egypt was starting to divide, things kind of changed and he became a little bit more of a villainous character so to speak, but diving into this. So trust that chaos is a part of the process of change. Things sometimes need to fall apart to reform into your desires. Hold your intention. So um, with this, it's talking about should the energies of set blow in from the desert, know that all is not lost. There is such a thing as necessary chaos. Sometimes things need to fall apart so that they can reform into what we really want. While we are in a chaotic space, mentally or physically, everything seems confusing and hopeless, yet we need to trust that we are simply in a place of transition. Feeling like we create chaos or cannot escape someone else's chaos can be tiring and stressful, but out of chaos comes new beginnings. When we feel there's anarchy in our lives, we often find exactly the type of order we need. There's also a yin to a yang, a dark to light, an east to west. One is not better than the other. They just are. We must recognize duality in ourselves for maximum sp spiritual growth. Perhaps you are seeing chaos and not order at present, and this is causing imbalance. Exactly. So with that said, definitely, again, I feel like this could resonate to the energy that your soulmate is currently going through, which again, this is your soulmate we're talking about. So not only could they be going through this energy, but you could be recognizing this energy in your life right now as well, because you two are connected. So again, the emphasis here is on the yin and the yang to find that balance. I also want to mention the darker side of set here, the shadow side, because again, the importance of duality, the light and the dark. So as set has a darker energy, it is worth exploring the emotions of jealousy and unethical competition. Set in some myths was prepared to win at any cost, something that is almost always destructive. It's important to accept chaos for its positive outcomes without letting it overcome your life. Exactly. So, yeah, you're at the darkest. Your soulmate can sometimes, they can be a little bit jealous. They can be definitely competitive. They have that competitive Mars energy about them. Uh, but again, serving in the positive, that is what makes them a very good leader and able to achieve what a lot of other people can't achieve. Uh, which includes something like liberation. They can free others where others, you know, in situations where others maybe have failed before. Very, very interesting. So 
that is what I'm seeing for the description here of your soulmate. If this resonated, please do leave a like. Of course, subscribe and turn the bell notification if you do not want to miss any future videos. And if you would like more exclusive, fun content, take part in polls, get, you know, personal readings, if that's something you're looking for, definitely do check out my uh, Patreon link down below because that will give you access to all kinds of additional goodies. So, Thank you all so much, and I will see you in the next one. All right, for those who picked pile two here with the blue calcite, we're going to go ahead and jump in and see uh, who here is representing your soulmate and getting more information about your soulmate. So, <laughs> uh, so for you guys, you have Magnus Chase coming out. So he is, of course, from the... Um, I think it's the series Magnus Chasing the Asgardians. Oh my god, I feel like such a doofus right now that I'm forgetting the actual series title. Um, but point is, we're talking about Norse gods here. He's a Norse demigod. His, um, I'm just like blinking on words right now. I'm so sorry. Uh, is um, Freyr is his godly parent. So, with him coming out to represent your soulmate, we're talking about a soulmate who is going to be very witty, very caring, smart, sneaky in some cases, and has a very funny and sarcastic sense of humor. They're going to be extremely street smart because maybe um, for a lot of you, your soulmate, you know, kind of had a rough started things, you know, kind of lived on the streets in some cases, you know, definitely comes from very humble um, kind of beginnings, you know, and, you know, they're definitely going to have this sense of obligation to protect those who are in danger or those who are like weaker. They, they want to protect those and give to those in situations, um, because they, they relate to it. They can also be a bit cynical. They can have a tendency to make kind of small, uh, snide remarks, both kind of internally and verbally, which kind of goes along with their sometimes very like smart assy uh, attitude. <laughs> Uh, but they're going to be, your particular soulmate is going to be very health conscious. So don't be surprised if they have like an at-home dream, if they care a lot about like the food that they eat, what they drink. Uh, they pay a lot of attention to cleanliness, kind of like Virgo vibes right now. I'm getting, um, they're definitely much better at like thinking and talking out their problems. And they could definitely be, have very good like natural, like, um... You know, this is just kind of their natural state is they like to problem solve in this way. They're not necessarily like the most graceful when it comes to, you know, um, like physical, like combat, very different from like pile one where I felt like they're, there's definitely a very sporty aspect. They're not necessarily, it's not that they are weak necessarily or that they, you know, again, they, they could go to the gym, but they're not going to be like that buff gym person or be like super competitive, sporty kind of person. They're a little bit more, they like more, uh, again, problem solving kind of situation. So a little bit more on the intellectual side and, uh, strategy, they, again, they got that sneaky streak about them. So more so, if I were going to, like, put them in a class of something, more, like, along the lines of, like, maybe kind of, like, an assassin <laughs> in some ways. So, and again, they could be, they could definitely show, like, great flexibility in tactics and, you know, be very good, a good reflective uh, thinker. So really thinking quickly on their feet the, so it's like what they make f up for in like physical prowess, they give it at all when it comes to like their tactical thinking and seeing problems and traps and doing that. So even when it comes to the career, they might, pr uh, or studies or whatever it is that they're doing right now, 
they they like things that are going to mentally stimulate them into those kind of realms of things. And again, they are also very generous. So it could definitely come to a point where with your particular soulmate, they might come into like an inheritance because they could have a lot of extended family. Some of them that they're kind of like disconnected from because they got disconnected from them. But then they later learn out like, oh, wow, I have this inheritance or something. That's not going to be the case for everybody. Or... The, again, they're just going to do something where they end up getting like a decent sum of money, but it's not, they don't do it and they don't use that money for like greedy purposes. They're very much about being generous and giving it back to others and even starting things that are very like, uh, like volunteering or charity work, you know, helping with people who are, again, maybe were less fortunate, maybe like homeless or orphanages because they themselves have gone through some sort of experience like that. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive a little bit more into their cards and information about them. So let's see what we have for the tarot. We have, look at that. We have the three of cups. Yes, they're very good with people. They do. They like to relate to people. They understand how to like, again, it doesn't matter what walks of life people come from, they can try to find, they, they will try to find common ground to share and converse with. We also have the king of wands. They're not, again, they're good stri uh, strategic individuals. They are not going to back down from a challenge or a problem. They will find ways to work through it. We also have the king of swords. Yes, that mental capacity. They know how to plan. They are definitely an intellectual. They might work in some kind of intellectual field or law at some point. And we also have, holy shit. We have three kings here. Holy shit. Wow. They are very, very masculine. Um, But we have the king of pentacles, king of swords, king of wands. So yeah, they, again, they know just how to be in control, but they do it from a place of wanting to bring other people together. They never want to like lord their capabilities or their powers over others. But yes, they can definitely see that cynicism and the, like the smart assiness here with like the King of Swords and the King of Wands. And with the King of Pentacles, it's like, yeah, they are definitely, they have a business mindset. They know how to solve those kind of problems. Let's see what else we have here. And this makes a lot of sense as well. We have Venus in Aquarius with detachment. That's that very King of Swords kind of energy. And we also have Jupiter in Scorpio with manipulation. Yeah. In, in kind of their darker, it's both a positive and a negative where it's like, yes, they can be a little bit manipulative or they know how to manipulate a situation because, again, they're very quick and reflective with their thinking. And so they look for like chinks in people's armor uh, they can kind of pull back and be a little bit uh, detached emotionally sometimes. Um, and again, that, I feel like that kind of stems from situations where they kind of had to remove themselves emotionally from things that were happening in order to protect themselves. It's kind of like a shot, definitely a shadow aspect. So diving a little bit more into these uh, particular cards. So we're going to talk about Venus with Aquarius. When this card is drawn in a reading, it may indicate a detached feeling with regards to one's relationship. Negatively, it can mean that there is no means of making contact. Wow. Events are a sudden love affair with a friend, an unusual free love relationship, an unusual or odd relationship, a couple living separate lives, and agreement between lovers. So, again, I feel like this could definitely represent... Um, the romantic situation. And that's also a point to say with, um, especially this character coming out, representing your soulmate, your soulmate might be, um, a little bit bad when it comes to like picking up on romantic cues. Sometimes, um, they could be a little bit, have conflicting feelings. Um, when it comes to getting involved romantically with people, because I feel like, he he's the type that's definitely going to be about getting to know 
and establish like a very close relation of close friendship first. And so it also uh, sometimes becomes a, like a an inner internal struggle with them where it's like, oh, this person is my friend, but now I'm starting to feel like romantic attraction to them. And now I don't really understand that. And I'm like, should I act on it? Should I not act on it? I don't really know. Like, I feel like that's something that they can definitely have happen, which is why I wouldn't be surprised if this particular soulmate becomes a very close friend for you. And also, they're very open-minded. So, especially when it comes to their relationships. So, they could even be, uh, I'm just going to say it, it may not be the case for everybody, but they themselves could be, like, bi. Um, they could swing... Either way, it's like, or the gender of who they fall in love with really doesn't matter much to them. They're very, you know, flexible when it comes to that. But again, it becomes kind of more of a question of do they want to risk the friendship for the romance? And sometimes that can cause them to hesitate to kind of jump in. Now with the Jupiter in Scorpio... So this is talking about, in a reading, this card may warn that one is following a false or manipulative person. Scorpio's natural rulership of the 8th house shows a benefit from an inheritance or heirloom. What was I already saying? Yes, there is some sort of her inheritance or heirloom uh, coming for this person. So events are a difficult legal problem. Persuasive promotion or propaganda for a person or project. Detective work to prize out someone's secrets. Yes, I feel like they could be very good at doing something like that work-wise. So next up for more Neil Trump information, let's see what we have here. Oh, very interesting. So we have Neptune with dreams. I feel like they are very dreamy. Uh, they have, you know, great imagination. They can sometimes kind of... You can see them kind of staring off into space and kind of like having their mind wander. Because again, they're working out various different problems and scenarios. But can we have imagination, memories, the subconscious, self-sacrifice, ideals, universal love, visions, meditations, spirituality, compassion, empathy, fantasies, escapism, the ether, enchantment, confusion, veils, and magic. Yes, they're definitely going to have an interest in the occult, in the magical side of things. We also have here, oh, fucking hell, exactly. We have a lot of Scorpio and, like, Aquarius energy coming out here. So, yeah, they definitely have a, a Scorpio, strong Scorpio placement. They might be prone to, like, staring at you a lot and observing. Again, they're, they're very much about that with other people. So, the animal transformative, intense, passionate, secretive, carnal, thorough, obsessive, intimate, primal, lusty, deep, external, resourceful, mysterious, regenerative, compulsive, destructive, and manipulative. Yeah, and again, they're not going to shy away from the taboo or the mysterious. And again, they're not going to care. Like, whatever your identity, your sexual preference is, it's like, that doesn't matter to them. Um, they're very open-minded and they'll just accept whatever because it's like if they love you, they're going to love you for you. Like any of that kind of – like this is definitely a soulmate where it's like labels do not matter to them. It's like they base everything off the kind of person that you are um, regardless of labels, regardless of gender. That is what they base everything off of. We also have – oh my god, more – just more Scorpio kind of energy. We have Pluto with transformation. So renewal, inner resources, basic instinct, motivation, personal power, evolution, compositing cycles, death, rebirth, subversion, suspicion, obsession, intensity, reckoning, taboos, clearing, and extremes. Mm -hmm. And we have the third house with perception. We, so we have Gemini's ruling house. Uh, speech, thoughts, social media, excursions, dating, siblings, research, street life, circulation, discussions, surroundings, and sociability. Yes, they are very social. They're very perceptive. They, this is definitely the type of person who they, regardless of, they're going to stalk you on your social media for sure. If they're interested in you and they start having, catching feelings, um, they're going to stalk your social media. And they could even do work in regards to, like, the social media field or any kind of written communication. Uh, they could have an interest in photography or something. But 
and also just research street life again they're so awesomely good at like street smarts so they could even be i get the sense that this uh soulmate they might not even have like formal education like they might not have gone to college or maybe they did go to college for like a few semesters and then they dropped out because it just didn't work for them or they or maybe they didn't have the funds for it or whatnot but it's like that is no reflection on just how intelligent this person can be because in a lot of ways it's like the street smarts makes up for it, but they also take it, take it upon themselves to educate themselves on topics that are important to them. And they, they can do and they can achieve a lot just through their sheer, sheer willpower and tenacity, I get the sense of. They have a lot of the, again, inner resources to depend upon where it's like that sense of like traditional education or traditional like working paths just don't, it's not necessary for them. They don't need that. They have the imagine, imagination, the ingenuity to just do whatever they want in a lot of cases. So it's really interesting. Next up, and this makes a lot of sense, we got octopus. So it's like, both as a positive and as a negative, they could be really fantastic. Your soulmate could be a very fantastic uh, multitasker. They can do a lot of things. They they are, again, they are naturally just very intelligent because the octopus is so incredibly smart and just ingenious as a creature. So we're going to go ahead and dive a little bit more into this card and see its message. And of course, this is representing the water element. So reaching, yearning, lacking boundaries and direction. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, like sometimes it, it's so funny with this. It's like they can be so fucking intense and just like emotionally, like emotionally, like intense and like attached. But then other times just completely pull away and like give you the cold shoulder. And that can be like really confusing to you, especially like if you piss them off they will completely detach and it will be like, oh my God. It's just like, you don't want that to happen because I feel like it's it's really harsh because it's like, they're so good. They're so perceptive. They observe so much. It's like, they will be extremely fucking cutting with their words when they want to be, if you piss them off. So the octopus signifies a wonderful perceptive mind paired with a lack of healthy boundaries. Unfortunately, this results in a well-intended but messy relationships. The octopus entwines itself with other people's business and shares their own without restraint. They believe that's what it means to be close. If you notice after spending time with someone that you feel drained or uneasy, the essence of octopus is at play. Begin to establish healthy boundaries. Be patient and firm. It may be a very old habit to change. So I feel like for them, um, they can be sometimes susceptible to like psychic vampirism or even then themselves can sometimes act as psychic vampires. It just depends on the situation and like how evolved your soulmate is at the stage that they're going through. Uh, but when the octopus is in balance for them, they're interested, they're engaged, and they're intelligent. Everything that we've already talked about, obviously. When they're out of balance, they're needy, they're clinging, and they lack courage. So how to bring it into balance is space to oneself, talk therapy. Talk therapy. And what was what we were describing? It's like, yeah, they're about talking out their ideas and their, uh, again, what is going through their head. That's just how they work. They got to... Um, and think and talk out their problems. This is just what they're going to do. So yeah, they can sometimes be, and I feel like it, it, it's like, it might be like, kind of like, uh, what? But it's, it's kind of an endearing thing because it means they trust you if they are kind of like verbally just like spitting out everything they're thinking to you. And like, it, it seems like oversharing, but it's because it's like, you finally have reached that level with them where it's like they actually trust you enough to just like spill their guts to you. Um, but yeah, and but then sometimes they they will be kind of reclusive. They will track, they will detach when they need their own personal space. Sometimes without warning. It just depends. So next up to describe them, we have, oh wow, a lot of these came out. So... And it makes so much sense. Again, what we talked about with the third house, 
You know, writing could be something to do. We have scribe, light attributes of perceiving knowledge and information, excuse me, preserving knowledge and information. Shadow attributes of alters facts or plagiarizes others' work. We also have the mediator, uh, light attributes of gifts for negotiating fairness and strategy in personal and professional life, respect for both sides of an argument. The shadow attributes of negotiating with an alternative motive or hidden agenda, either personally or professionally. And again, with that manipulation of Scorpio, being able to prize uh, people's secrets out of them. Yeah, they're very good at doing that. That's because they are a very good mediator. We also have the rescuer. So light attributes of provide strength and supports to others in crisis, acts out of love with no expectation of reward. That's their philanthropic, you know, charitable kind of attitude for sure. Shadow attributes of assumes that the rescued will reciprocate, needs the rescued one needy. That's definitely, again, their shadow aspect is like that neediness or wanting to be needed. Because uh, maybe, again, they, they dealt with some sort of abandonment issues um, in their younger years. So next up, and this could definitely represent, you know, energy that they're currently going through. or And also, because it's energy your soulmate could be going through, it's also energy that you yourself could be going through. We have victory in the reverse. So let's go ahead and see what this has to say. Oh, boy, the storm is starting to roll in. Uh, so... In the reverse, the victory card reverse signals a delay or reversal in a hoped for outcome, whether it's in personal change or external achievement. Success may not uh, may have been eluding you for some time, but do not despair. You may need to restructure things, reevaluate or release one specific outcome and set your sights on another. Whatever is going on externally, remember that the... Um, equanimity of peaceful surrender can often be your biggest victory of all very interesting so i feel like that could definitely represent maybe a phase that they've gone through or they are currently going through where they just are kind of needing to um again do that peaceful surrender to the situation and not be so focused on a particular outcome to things so Next up, it's interesting because they actually got two of the Gods and Titan cards because, of course, I had to pull from these. Uh, so we have Maui with Discovery. Yeah, that so matches the personality, that, like, kind of jokey, sarcastic kind of energy uh, and trickster energy as well. And then we have Ul with Focus, which is actually, I believe, is a uh, Norse uh, deity here. I am correct. I'm just going to double check myself, but I'm pretty sure I am right. Yep, Norse god of marksmen. Haha. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about Ul first with focus. So, this is clear mindedness and a focused intent are necessary for success right now. You need stamina for long term projects. So, Today, Ul is a popular god of skiing. Uh, some modern Nordic Olympians wear symbols of Ul on their clothes and equipment. It is certainly worth saying a few prayers to him next time you wish to tackle a harder than usual ski run. So maybe your particular soulmate, maybe they do skiing as a hobby. Call on Ul when you need more focus and clarity in your life. No matter how harsh the terrain, literal or emotional, Yul can get you through to where you wish to be. He can lend you the stamina you need to complete a task when there are distractions, obstacles, or haters all around you. He is the essence of calm centeredness and will help you achieve what you wish to achieve with um, minimal, uh, a minimum of fuss. Very nice. So the shadow aspect though, is focus is generally a good thing. However, if we focus on one thing and one thing only to the exclusion of all else, this could be an issue in the long term. So obsession, which is totally, you know, obviously a Scorpio trait. So they can sometimes in their shadow aspect, get a little obsessive. We all know people who focus wholly on school and forget to have friends or other commitments. This is the shadow side of being focused. Focus is important, but so is balance. So that's like your soulmate's greatest uh, hurdle is definitely um, 
finding that balance. It is now officially pouring outside. So now we're going to talk about Amali and his message here. So with discovery, so feeling, feel eager again for discovery and adventure. Curiosity may help you break barriers and solve problems. So Call on Maui when you are eager for discovery, when you are working on solving a difficult problem and the answers seem far away, or when you need to find a little of the hero within yourself. Exactly. So, uh, the shadow aspects of Maui are Maui is a trickster and often makes his discoveries or gets his prize through stealing or at the very least outmaneuvering those in his way. While the end sometimes does justify the means, deceit and deception are not the ideal ways to get what we want. Maui's appearance raises questions about our levels of authenticity, honesty, and uh, contrivance. We need to also monitor our levels of anger and frustration. Sometimes humor can diffuse a difficult situation in the best possible way. So yeah, your soulmate might even use humor as a way to kind of cover up uh, what they're going through emotionally or to, again, diffuse a situation. And yes, again, they have that trickster energy about them where sometimes they can, again, fall into that very Scorpio energy of like kind of manipulating, trying to get their way, sometimes not saying the full truth because, again, they want to know that they can trust you with that first. And again, judge you by the basis of your character, not any kind of other things. They're going to really watch you like a hawk and make sure that you are somebody they can completely trust. So with that said, I think that is everything I'm seeing here for uh, this pile. If this resonated, please do leave a like, comment down below, and of course, subscribe and turn the bell notification if you do not want to miss any future videos. And if you want more exclusive content, personal readings, Pisces podcasts with all kinds of interesting uh, witchy topics and information, definitely do check out my Patreon link down below because you'll get access to all kinds of additional fun goodies. So, Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, for those who picked pile three here with the aqua calcite, we're going to go ahead and see who it is that is representing your soulmate. So for you guys who chose this pile, you got Jason Grace. So with Jason coming out to represent your particular soulmate here we're talking about a soulmate who is definitely uh oh boy we got how fitting we got a total little thunderstorm going outside his uh because these are demigod characters his godly parent is zeus so hey uh but yes he you know your soulmate is going to be a very kind person who gives everybody a chance and accepts everyone for who they are you know, they are going to be a very good mediator when it comes to conflicts and making compromises. They're also going to be more than willing to sacrifice themselves for the greater good or for people that they care about, you know, and it's going to be that type of person who's going to keep all of their promises. They take uh, promises very, very seriously um, because and part of that stems from kind of a fear of abandonment. Um, where it's like they feel like they have to very much follow strict rules and, you know, sometimes they can come off as like the too perfect and the too straight lace kind of person uh, because of this deeper seated issue of, again, the abandonment issue where it's like they felt like if they didn't keep those promises, if they didn't follow those rules, then they were going to be abandoned again kind of aspect. So that's something maybe in their younger years they went through and they had to work through. Uh, but overall, you know, they make a very great friend and they're a very friendly person. They're very affectionate. Um, they give the people that they love advice in their time. They really listen to them. But... Um, again, when it comes to initially, maybe when you first meet them, they can come off as kind of cold. 
Um, and again, that's stemming from the abandonment kind of issues where it's like they might not be quick to accept you in because, and they might be a little bit suspicion. They can sometimes even be a little bit judgmental or, you know, kind of cause conflict in that way because it, but it, it's, again, it's stemming from a place of deeper hurt that they kind of just, they, again, they don't want to go through that again. Um, they also can be, once they have let you into their circle and they are your friend, they, again, they're very much a person who's like, I want to be a friend. I want to be this person. So they can be a little uh, oblivious uh, or very much oblivious to romantic situations, you know, friendship that turns into more romance. Sometimes they can just kind of be like, just again, oblivious to it. So they, they're not necessarily, they might not be necessarily the kind of soulmate who's going to make the first move. So you being a little bit more of the aggressor, you being the one to kind of make that first move and be like, hey, I like you, like more than just a friend, like, can we go out, hang out more, just us together, like that might be the role that you need to take on. So let's go ahead and get a little bit more detail here about your soulmates. So we have the Ten of Swords coming out. Yeah, they've gone through some harsh shit. But again, they've learned a lot through it that it's a process. It's always cycles. When one thing ends and you have to surrender, it makes room for a new beginning to come through. We also have the Knight of Cups. So yes, they are very charming. Listen to the thunder, damn. They're very charming. They're very, again, they're very romantic. They were definitely going to be very attractive. But they can have kind of this tendency because a little bit of their obliviousness sometimes when it comes to the romance aspect where it's like they kind of just dip in and out of your life because it's like it's more so like, oh, yeah, we're, we're really good friends, right? So it's like they don't necessarily pick up on the, the romantic cues always. It's really interesting. We have two tens coming out. So ten is a very powerful number. So maybe, I don't know why, like maybe there's, this is like pretty drastic, but there could be like a 10 year difference between you two, or maybe again in 10 months, or maybe they were born in the 10th month, or maybe the 10th month is when you guys are going to meet or uh, something along those lines. But we have the 10 of cups. Yes, they are a family man. Like they, they see themselves. They would like to build a family. And again, they do not care, you know, where, what anybody's background is. It's like, they're very accepting. They're very open to other people. So I wouldn't be surprised if you guys' relationship, if it is like, um, a mixed kind of re like relationship where it's like, they come from a specific ethnicity and you come from a different one because they, they don't, they don't care. It's like, they, they love the people they love regardless of their background because it's just how they are again they're such a big hearted person they're a very heart chakra centered person and look and then we got the nine of cups as well damn you got successive cards here so yeah they're they are wish fulfillment they like to kind of like grant wishes like i see them as kind of like that really warm uh, kind of motherly figure in the friend group where it's like they care about making sure everybody's comfortable. Like, do you need a drink? Do you need a whoopee? Like, I don't know if it's like necessarily mother, but or like it's like mother energy, but almost to the extreme of like a very sweet grandmother who's like gonna like, do you need more food, honey? Do you want some cookies? Like, I don't know. That's just what I get. Like, they they really do have kind of that energy. But on the kind of like the flip side, on the sexier side of things, it's like, because yeah, yes, that, that definitely is an aspect to them with the uh, Knight of Cups. They have that energy. Don't, don't, don't be mistaken. They can be kind of like a party guy where it's like they love to throw a party. They love to be in the limelight. They love luxury. They love enjoyment. They love seeing other people happy and they really get off on that energy is what I'm getting. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like they want this harmonious, wonderful family where everybody is together. Um, cause maybe they didn't have that experience when they were younger. They didn't have a full complete family situation. So let's go ahead and see what else we have here. We also have, uh, 
Jupiter, I'm like brain farting again, Jupiter in Sagittarius with principle. Yeah, they have strong principles. And again, they're, they're definitely a rule follower. They can be kind of like that straight laced person, but don't, again, don't be mistaken. They do have their wild side that will come out, but they're, just, they're very good. They're a very good guy. Uh, we also have Mercury in Virgo with organization. They're good at organizing. They're good at keeping people together. Again, the mediator comes out in that way. So, so uh, definitely as a husband, uh, cause again, I feel like this is something ultimately they would love to be. They want to be a husband. They want to spend their life with somebody. Um, they are going to be, they, they take those vows really fucking seriously. It's like, if they are going to marry you, they really fucking mean the vows. Like until death do us part loyal to a fault this does not feel like the kind of soulmate where you have to worry about even though again we have the nine of cups here which can sometimes be viewed as that that casanova you know that fleeting hearts kind of night it's like it really i don't know i just don't feel like that's necessarily how maybe a little bit maybe when they're like a little bit in like their youthful kind of like 20s uh, maybe they played around a little bit in the field, but it's like, cause they just love love. But it's like, when it comes to something like marriage though, because that has to do with vows and promises, it's like, yeah, they're going to take that so, so seriously. So they do not feel like the kind of soulmate who's going to, you have to worry about them cheating or having eyes for anybody else. If they're going to make that promise to you, they really fucking mean it. Uh, which means you need to really fucking mean it. And be very serious about it because it's like they are going to go all the way for sure. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and see. We want to talk about Jupiter in Sag with principle. So when this card appears in a reading, it will raise a matter of principle or life philosophy that is particularly related to the question. So it has to do with events of planning a grand tour or world trip, being completely immersed in a new philosophy or religion, conversion, the need to persuade others of a philosophy. And then we have our Mercury in Virgo, which is saying, when this card is drawn, it indicates that hard, conscientious work is required in order to achieve long-term aims or solve an immediate problem. So events are a need for extreme patience, discussion about discipline and control, Taking a position of responsibility, working with someone famous. Very interesting. But yeah, that was like the point that I was getting where it's like, yeah, when it comes to the relationship, it's like if they are serious and they have their heart set on you, it's like when arguments happen, when disagreements happen, they are going to be the type, even if they can get pissed off or emotional or whatever it is. It's like they will want to sit down and work through the problem. They don't allow that to like damage the relationship, if that makes sense, where it's like, like, I, I don't really see them as the type to kind of run away. They're definitely not like a runner in a serious relationship. They are going to be like, I'm going to stay here and we are going to work through these issues because I'm serious about you. And I, and even though I might be fucking mad as hell right now it's like i still love you regardless and i want to figure out what is the problem and how can we fix it because this relationship matters to me like that is just the vibe i get so delving more into uh possible natal chart it's really interesting because again this was talking about a world tour uh because again sagittarius energy so that makes sense we have the ninth house which is sagittarius house seeking Foreign travel, adventure, higher education, customs, faith, beliefs, pilgrimages, spiritual quests, aspirations, journalism, religion, gurus, and risk-taking. So what I'm necessarily getting here, I'm not really feeling like, unlike with some of the other previous piles, like, I'm not feeling like your soulmate is, I, like, I'm not necessarily getting a strong sense that they're necessarily from a completely different culture than you. I feel like... Um, maybe they could have like different religious beliefs from you or again, Oh, there goes one of my lights. Hang on. Uh, so as I was saying, so I'm not really getting the sense of like, like there's necessarily like a drastic difference. Like I, I don't really feel like necessarily you're from different like continents. Um, 
I'm more so getting the sense of like difference and maybe like again maybe one of you has like different ethnic uh what's the word I'm looking for like ethnic background um there could be like different cultural backgrounds but I'm not getting the sense that you necessarily are from different countries like I'm getting the sense of almost like you guys could go to like the same university or like very similar universities and you just like happen like you could actually like meet and join up by happen like happenstance or fate more so like on a foreign trip like that your school like a foreign exchange like kind of like trip or study abroad there we go study abroad like a study abroad trip and you guys are both on that same trip and that's like how you start meeting and how you start talking uh because of that emphasis of the higher education um I, I get the sense that they could definitely have like a religious belief that they do closely follow and that they believe in um and that is definitely gonna be very different from you but they're still a very open-minded person uh, it's very interesting, like, what I'm getting for you and your soulmate here. Like, it's, I overall, like, the message that I'm getting is, like, they're closer than you think. Like, whatever your situation, they're closer to you than you realize. Interesting. So, we also have the Ascendant here with Outlook. So, worldview, mission statement, expression, effect, role, mark, attitude, outer self, point of view, body image, aura, likeness, approach, impact, and first impressions. So, first, making a good first impression um, definitely matters to them. But also, I feel like that goes back into that message of, like, sometimes you can have the wrong first impression about your soulmate. Because sometimes they can come off as a little cold. They can come off as a little distant or suspicious. Because, again, that just comes from whatever they may have gone through. Especially if they've gone through, like, a recent bad breakup romantically. It's, like, they're definitely going to be very suspicious and, like, very put off to any kind of, like, other romantic situations. Because, again, this person loves very deeply. And so, when they choose to get into relationships, they take them extremely seriously. So, if a relationship doesn't work out they're not going to be quick to like jump in the horse again so i feel like in a lot of ways you are going to have a crush on them for a lot longer before they ever realize that you have like romantic interest unless you're very like obvious but you're gonna not necessarily like tell them that you're into them very quickly because you're gonna find out like they just went through a harsh breakup and they'll say something like yeah i'm not really gonna date anytime soon again just because of going through that um which is gonna like make you because you don't want to make them uncomfortable or anything or overstep a boundary so you'll just be like oh sh like in your head you're gonna be like oh shit that sucks because i'm like really into this person hmm interesting so we also have i'm not i'm getting very specific messages here so we then have pisces with the mystic so imagination, compassion, healing, empathetic, mystical, uh, adorning, magical, allowing, dreamy, ethereal, uh, fear, ugh, can't speak today, ephemeral, enigmatic, uh, spiritual, emotional, escapist, impractical, oceanic, self-pity, illogical. So yeah, they themselves could be maybe a water sign because we do have a lot of cups energy here. So they could definitely be a Pisces. Um... So they're definitely going to have this, like, kind of mystical aura about them. They're going to be definitely sensitive. Um, there's definitely going to be something very dreamy about their eyes. They're, they're just going to be very pretty. They could also have, like, something very unique about their features. They could have, like, a very, like, odd mole or maybe even a scar on their face. But it doesn't take away from, like, their overall, like, handsomeness, if that makes sense. So let's see what else we have. We also got, oh, we got two cards for this too. So we have raccoon and we have fox. So they're very clever. They're definitely clever. They're very um, adaptable. Uh, they could definitely have an artistic vibe about them. Because I think both of these, what energy is both of these cards? It's uh, earth energy, right? Yes, they're both earth energy related. So we're going to start off with the raccoon. So, talented, shadowy, and hiding. Raccoon energy is at play within all artists. 
to greater or lesser degrees. At best, it indicates talent, tenacity, and skillfulness with a particular musical instrument or creative tool. It shadow side points to an unresolved issue around self-image and success. Sometimes using a stage name or wearing a mask works in an artist's favor. Other times, it limits creativity. Am I who my audience thinks I am? What if I am ready to grow into something more? Raccoon energy won't let us off the hook until this creative ego fear is resolved. So obviously your soulmate could literally do something in the creative field. They could be musically talented. Uh, but yes, they could have a tendency to wear a certain mask sometimes. So when the raccoon is in balance, they're a very generous friend and an exceptional artist. When they're out of balance, they're competitive and they buy into that starving artist idea. How to bring into balance for them is to make new work. Um, to be, I feel like they are the type that is like, and these are successive cards in this deck. I feel like they're very inspired. Yeah, so they could do something in writing as well, especially with the Knight of Cups holding that um, that quill. Um, and I feel like in some ways, don't be surprised if like they're kind of inadvertent. Like I feel like with them, it's like they're inadvertently flirtatious. Like they're inadvertently like unknowingly a Casanova. They're not trying to do it. It's just like kind of naturally just comes into them. Um, so they might even say stuff like, cause they get so close to you. They might say things, they might touch you, but they might not be like consciously aware of like what they're doing comes off as flirting. Um, and they might even say things like, oh, wow, you're like such my muse or, you know, oh, I was like so inspired that I did this piece for you or like based around you, things like that, which would like indicate like oh wait are they like into me more than I realized and I feel like you guys are going to be questioning that a lot uh which is kind of maddening so the fox here is about smart strong partner or mate wise teacher and exactly I feel like your soulmate here is going to ultimately be like such a strong partner and mate like they're so they told so take that role so fucking seriously so the fox is an enchanting creature with plenty of mystique to go around. Fox personalities are skillful in business and also make great teachers. They are quick to learn and adapt well to do situation. Foxes are ideal life partners as they commit to relationships for the long term and their natural charisma keeps things exciting. Fox energy helps us stay true to those most dear to us. When this card appears, reconnect to those you love. Foxes don't do well when they slip away. So when in balance, they're magical, ingenious teacher, and monogamous. Very, very fucking monogamous. Nothing would hurt this soulmate more than cheating. Like, it would be just absolutely soul-shattering to them. So, so, so soul-shattering. It's like, honestly, just like heart-wrenching. Uh, when out of balance, they can be sneaky and unsure of their identity. So, yeah, they can definitely have, like, an identity crisis sometimes. Uh, with the raccoon and the fox kind of saying that same thing. So, how to bring into balance here is through partnership and connection. They are so, uh, they so need partnership in their life. They want partnership. So, so bad. I wouldn't be surprised, like, once, like, a, a romantic relationship is established, don't be unsurprised if they really want you to, like, jump phases kind of quickly, like, okay, I want to move in together, I'm ready to propose, like, I want to start this life with you, I'm, like, you are the one, and it's like, there's nothing in the world that's going to change my mind about that. Um, I also feel like they're really good with kids as well. So yeah, they might want to be a teacher, maybe a teacher within the arts, something along those lines. So let's see what else we have here. We also have the beggar. So the attributes of confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival, awakens the spiritual authority of humility, compassion, and self-esteem, shadow attributes of dependency on others to the exclusion of effort. So, yeah, I feel like they themselves, especially with Pisces here, they could be so, so giving, so, so generous, um, and very, very compassionate. Uh, but sometimes they can also kind of, in their negative, I feel like they could kind of go into codependency sometimes. It just it really depends. 
So we also have here for the energy that they could maybe be uh, going with right now. We have door to personal healing and happiness. I feel like this is what they're looking for right now. They want to go through that door. And again, this might resonate for you guys as well because this is your soulmate. So you guys are going to vibe with each other, obviously. So with this energy, new beginnings in your personal life. That's what they're looking for right now. This card is a harbinger of positive change. The beautiful light-filled door opens into a lush rainbow-lit spring field with vibrant lotus flowers. Whether you're working on some inner healing, such as breaking an addiction or looking to make some external changes, such as finding a new place to live, this card signals that your life is opening up and new opportunities are about to appear. The changes you've been working on are ready to blossom with wonderful results. So make sure you see your personal intentions uh, through with continued action, and optimistic expectations. Exactly. They are so, so looking for that bright new beginning. Also, I feel like, you know, especially with the principal card, they're going to really stand up for their personal principles. So they're not afraid to like, push against authority, uh, especially to get people to be treated fairly. They want everybody to be treated fairly. Um, yeah, and I, again, I feel like they're very, and it's so interesting because our last card here, our godly card here, is exactly the word I was thinking of, which is altruistic, because then we have Prometheus with altruism. So with this, we're going to go ahead and talk about Prometheus. So, make decisions or start projects for the good of all. Seek out a healthy balance between yourself and others. So, today we know how important altruism, regard, uh, regard and consideration for others, is, especially in a world that has grown as unequal as ours has. In a time of climate change, of an ever-increasing gap between rich and poor, uh, acting for the greater good and not just for our individual selves is not only ethical, but necessary for our survival. In our modern times, we still honor Prometheus gift of fire during the torch relay of the Olympic games. We watch as the flame is lit and passed through many hands and many countries, uniting all in respect and equality. And I feel that that's so like your soulmates, um, philosophy it's like yes they are about this equality for all um trying to change and heal the world and they they are so empathetic to the detriment sometimes of themselves because sometimes i feel like they can give of themselves way too much to other people that they can end up uh extremely drained so the shadow aspect of prometheus then is we would think that there would be a little shadow over, we would think that there would be little shadow over a concept like altruism, because it seems like helping the whole is always a good thing. But the shadow side can be revealed when we choose to help others solely for our own ends, or when we completely forget our own responsibilities. If we are a passionate activist, perhaps it's easy to forget that our friends and family, not just our causes, need us. Also, what we may believe is the right way for all may not, in fact, be the case. For example, many indigenous cultures have been damaged by well-intentioned missionaries purporting their own true faith and a cultural way of life they feel is best. Don't become too dedicated to making everyone experience good as you define it. I find that fucking crazy, given this particular image here, like... Wow. I feel like in school, because uh, I definitely feel like, the, 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 like, I just get a strong sense of, like, college here. Like, this is something they've studied. They've studied colonism and uh, the issues with that, the detriment of, like, you know, native, uh, the loss of, like, native tribal lands and the effects of that, of across the globe like they they do some form of study in that realm of things um maybe even like anthropology is something that they're interested in as well like they do something along those lines 
uh, very, very interesting. So, wow, that, that was a crazy one right here. So, that is everything I'm seeing here for your guys' particular pile. So, if this resonated, please do leave a like, comment down below. Um, if you would like to stay up to date with everything I'm doing here on my channel, please do hit that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss uh, when I upload. And if you would like to further support this channel and its continued growth and the work I'm doing here, please do check out my Patreon because that is a great place to get additional content from pick a cards to podcasts to personal readings to artwork. It is all through Patreon and I definitely highly encourage you guys to check it out if you're interested. So Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, for those who picked the fourth pile here, we're going to go with the uh, green calcite here. We're going to go ahead and see who is representing your soulmate. And so, for you guys, <laughs> we got the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> we got Percy Jackson, who is personally my one of my favorites still and always will be so again with percy coming out to represent your soulmate we're talking about a soulmate who is actually pretty intelligent but probably sometimes feels like they act dumber than they really are uh but they are extremely courageous and they have a wicked sense of humor um, but oftentimes, sometimes they are perceived as being kind of too changeable or unpredictable in nature. Uh, but they do have a very um, natural, you know, brave spirited. They are a natural leader. Um, again, very, very brave. They can definitely have sort of this brooding look about them. And they can be seen as kind of a rebel, kind of a you know, have a rebellious streak, kind of be a, a trouble starter, so to speak. And this especially doesn't help that they have an extremely, again, sarcastic, smart ass kind of sense of humor, but also, you know, very laid back at the same time. It's like, they're not, they're just, they're just like, they, they can be a cool cucumber sometimes, but uh, at the same flip side, kind of in their shadow aspect, they can have a very short tempered, and have uh, sometimes troubles controlling their emotions, especially their anger, especially when they see things happening that piss them off, especially like injustices, bullying, you know, anything like that can really like, sh like that short fuse. Um, again, very sarcastic, very moody sometimes. And, you know, their recklessness for your soulmate can tend T make them like have a tendency to like blurt out things that they're just thinking which can sometimes like be maybe a little bit off-putting because it's like you're like why why you're just like why the fuck are you saying that you s have a little bit of a filter here <laughs> sometimes in some situation you're just like and I don't necessarily feel like it's directed at you. I feel like it's more like in situations where it's like maybe uh, maybe a situation where may, uh, it's like better to maybe hold your tongue. Like I don't really feel like your soulmate would do very good in customer service sometimes because I feel like if they have a particular customer that's really pissing them off and they get really annoyed, it's like they're just going to blurt out exactly what they're thinking and that's just not – that's not very good for like <laughs> – public relations and like customer service it's fucking funny to witness like don't get me wrong like the shit that comes out of their mouth is gonna be so funny so witty and so like out of just like oh my god I can't believe you actually said that and not to mention you said that directly to that person's face and they're not gonna give a fuck who anybody is um to to and to explain on that what I mean is it's like they they're not they're not gonna care if it's like the boss or if it's like some you know big shot important person it's like if they're acting like an asshole, they're going to just say to the face, oh, you're acting like an asshole. Like they, they just, again, they, like their filters, like they, they especially get to a point as they age more and more where it's like, they just don't give a fuck. Like zero fucks are given. <laughs> oh, you want me to give a fuck? Sorry. They all flew away. Like that's like the kind of like just the banter, the banter that you like you, if you do not want a fucking soulmate who is this witty and this sarcastic, who's going to throw around some of the most 
wild fucking humor, this isn't the right person for you because they're just going to be out there sometimes and you're just going to be like, holy fucking shit <laughs> with the wild shit. Like they're very comedic. Um, so moving along here, you know, but with that said, they do, your soulmate is definitely going to feel very responsible for everything and anything that goes wrong. Because they have a tendency to kind of blame themselves for when things go wrong. And sometimes, yeah, they're in the right where they probably did cause an issue. But a lot of times they will take on other people's dramas or or, or take on just like the responsibility for something. Like in an example where it's like, again, for some reason, I keep going back to this customer service situation. Like I'm almost like like getting a vibe of like, oh, what is that movie with Ryan Reynolds in it? Uh, the cooking, the restaurant one, <sighs> waiting. I don't know. I'm getting kind of like a waiting vibe. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's how you're going to meet your soulmate. It's like, you guys are going to be like working at like a restaurant or like in some sort of like public service, um, kind of like a uh, customer service kind of situation. And they're like on the team and it's like they really everybody likes like a lot pretty much everybody likes them because they are just like a funny guy and they, they they're very reliable um to the point where it's like if somebody who is maybe more like quiet or demure or something like that or like i'm i'm just getting the specific image of like there is like a particular girl and it's not you uh, but, like, a different girl that you guys work with and something, like, f she, like, makes a mistake. And she didn't mean to make the mistake, but, like, somebody is just, like, you know, tearing into her and then the boss is not understanding and they're, you know, tearing into her. They, your soulmate is the type of person who is actually going to take the blame for that person. And they're not looking for any kind of reward back, but it's, like, they, they just don't care. Um, if they are the ones that get blamed for it, because it's like, they would rather take that responsibility than watch somebody else be in pain. If that makes sense. Something like that. Something along those lines. Um, with that said, you know, even though your soulmate is definitely going to be very perceptive when they need to be, especially in like a dire situation, when it comes to romantic things and, like, things that are right in front of them, they can be very fucking oblivious to it. Um, also, I just noticed, like, for this particular pile, unlike with a lot of the other ones, like, I'm cursing a lot more. So don't be surprised if your soulmate peppers their language a lot with, extra, you know, explosive slang and cussing and stuff. It's just, like, their vibe. Like, they again, they're very laid back where it's like they don't care. It's like, and if you have a problem with them saying fuck or something, it's like, oh, well, that's your problem. That's not my problem. It's not going to make me stop doing it. Like, what do you expect? <laughs> I don't know. That's just like their attitude. It's like, what do you expect? Like, I've already dealt with, like, so much bullshit and, like, any, every kind of person that you can think of. And, yeah, it's like, they're like, I don't care. I don't care. Like, come at me. Just go for it. I've already, like, like, I don't know. This is just the vibe they give off. <laughs> I can't explain it. Um, but overall, they're a very powerful but gentle and helpful person. And, you know, they would definitely be that type of person to, like, guide ships safely to shore rather than destroy them. You know, they would do anything to save a friend they would be the type to literally sacrifice the world to save a friend. They're also extremely fucking loyal. Um, not to mention, like, romantically speaking, it's like if they get romantically involved with you, they will literally fall into the pits of hell for you. Because they, when they are serious about you, they are serious about you. They are honestly, like, an awesome person to have on your team. Because um, not only are they, that again, that natural leader, but... They will just do whatever it takes to make the team succeed and protect the people that they care about a hundred and like 10% for sure. So I've already said a lot and we haven't even gotten to the other cards yet. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see what we got going on here. So we have the Knight of Swords coming out here. 
We also have the Chariot. We also have the Seven of Swords. Mm -hmm. And we have the Five of Wands. Yeah, they're not afraid of competition or conflict. It's like, they've. I feel like they've already been there, done that. Even if they're not, like, extremely, like, old in age. Um, it's like they, they've achieved a certain level of, like, coolness and, like, maturity that is kind of surprising. Um, maybe for some people. They're definitely... They, they care about their family, um, because especially with char the chariot here, because that's cancer energy, so they care a lot about family. They're not afraid to, they again, they can work well in a team, I feel like, but they're also, but they're always going to be a little bit like standing on their own, because again, they have that leadership quality where it's like, they can do things on their own just fine, uh, but they can also work together in a team as well. I feel like they're very, they're very sure on their goals. Like once they set their mind to something, it's like, yeah, they're just going to go after it. They're, they got this confidence about them. It's like, that's almost kind of effortless in a sense. They've worked a lot in achieving a natural balance for themselves, balancing both their negative and their positive aspects. Very interesting. So let's go ahead and also... Look at what, there's a lot of additional cards that came out. So we have Mars and Taurus with defense. We also have Mercury in Virgo with caution. We also have, oh wow, Venus in Leo with affair. And we have Moon in Aquarius with independence. Yeah, they're very independent. Don't get that wrong. Um, They will kind of like go off and do their own thing. And I feel like, oh yeah, they're they're not really big on authority. Like it, it just depends. They're they're the type of person where it's like, it doesn't matter what your age is. It's like this is like the type of person where it's like if somebody who's older than them tries to make this argument of like, well, I'm your senior, you're supposed to respect me regardless of anything. They're like, no, like you either respect me. If you, if you want me to respect you, you have to respect me equally. Like, that is just their, their attitude. It's not that they're, let's say, against authority, but it's like they're, they're against bullies. So they're not going to be bullied into um, listening to anybody who they themselves don't respect and do not show respect back to them and others. That's just a, a vibe I'm getting. So with Moon in Aquarius. So this says, often when this card occurs in a reading, it shows that the person asking the question is trapped in a mental whirlwind. It indicates a need to let go of emotions and to allow feelings to express themselves without rationalizing them. It also suggests that the questioner's home will be used in the future for group meetings with some kind of good cause or humanitarian subject. So the events are some kind of unconventional assistance, original ideas brought to bear on a situation or a subject, a second opinion canvas, an interest in astrology. I feel like they do have an interest in uh, astrology as like a hobby. We then have uh, Mercury in Virgo with caution saying in a reading, this card usually indicates a need to carefully examine the pros and cons of a problem before taking any action. Virgo doesn't rush heedlessly into things. Although the card indicates a specialist as with all Mercury contacts, it holds the potential for more than one skill to fall back on in an emergency. So I feel like they, your soulmate, they are very um, well skilled. They have a lot of like useful skills that they rely on, but I'm not really getting the... I feel like they actually struggle a lot with examining the pros and cons of a... Like, they're... I feel like they struggle with that, like, stopping to think about something before they do it. I feel like sometimes they can just, like, just do it. Like, they'll, they'll just do it without necessarily always weighing the pros and cons to something. It's not that they don't have really good ideas. They do. They have fantastic ideas that work out really well for them. But sometimes... Uh, they definitely need a partner who can be a little bit more on the um, 
on that intellectual planning side to help kind of keep them in check. So particular events here are detailed craft work, cataloging a laborious task needing care and patience, restoration of order at work, and need to plan ahead. So yeah, I feel like they, they can sometimes struggle with that planning ahead aspect. Um, I also feel like they can sometimes struggle with patience as well. Like they, they rather get to the, do, the, the going and the doing of things than waiting around. So with the Venus and Leo, when this card read shows up, it shows that a new stimulus to creative endeavors will enter the life of the questioner. The card may suggest a new craze or interest, even a new love. Events are a deep romantic love affair a showy lifestyle, excessive luxury and extravagance, show business. Yeah, you know, that's honestly something I get with this uh, soulmate. It's like, if any career was going to be right for them, it would be something like in show business or in comedy or something kind of unconventional like that. Um, unconventional. Because it just would match their personality. It's like, it's not that they're not good with people. They are very good with people. But they just don't take any people's bullshit. It's like, mm, they they find a way to make it funny, for sure. Um, and they kind of get, I feel like they get off on the fact of kind of making people seem foolish. Especially when they are actually, like, really emphasizing when somebody is being foolish. By making it even more obvious how foolish they are. If that makes sense. That's just the vibe I'm getting. So, lastly, we have Mars with Defense and Taurus. Which is when this card is dealt in a reading, it shows a need to defend something the questioner values. So yeah, they're very good at defending what they value. So events are starting up a new business, playing the stock market, a quick business deal with a profit, a possession that makes a leap in value, beating a competitor. Yeah, they they are they have crazy luck. I also get the sense of it's like your soulmate, where it's like they just naturally are very good at winning things um and when it comes to competitions it's just like they can find a way to win um i don't necessarily want to say easily but it's just like it just works out for them they're definitely a survivor so let's also look at <laughs> honestly like a big thing that I keep, keeps coming to mind is kind of like even though I don't know why, like, Leo, well, yeah, we do have Leo and Venus, but there really is, there's quite a mix of, um, uh, Zodiac signs here, I just realized we have two sevens, I, I, that didn't even dawn on me for a second there, um, but, like, kind of Leo and Aquarius energy is definitely the more, like, strong energy here, a little bit of Taurus, too, I definitely get a strong sense of that as well. I feel like cancer is more representing, again, how they feel like when it comes to home and family. So we also have for nail chart information, we have Saturn with wisdom. So discipline, structure, time, responsibility, tests, ambition, difficulty, restraint, grounding, practicality, self-control, tradition, realism, container, bones, maturity, gravity, scoffling. I feel like this honestly represents their biggest challenge. They might have something like a um, I don't know why I wanted to say like Saturn retrograde in their natal chart or their Saturn is like kind of negatively aspected in their chart where it's like a big challenge for them. So I feel like all of those things are kind of stuff that they struggle with, like discipline, like time management, like self-control sometimes, like <laughs> tests, practicality, realism, like they can kind of and tradition like I don't they don't really feel like a very traditional person to me um either like I just I feel like these are kind of aspects that go against their natural nature but it's also like the hurdles that they need to kind of overcome and integrate because you still need these aspects um to keep the balance so, and it's really interesting, we also have the first house coming out with self, physical body, outlook, self-image, life philosophy, consciousness, opinions, awakening, self-awareness, arrival, expression, gateway, entry point. And what's even more crazy, we also have the 11th house with the edge. 
Friendship, group creativity, community, humanity, hope, tribe, festivals, discoveries, common goals, startups, rebellion, experimentation, the future. So there's a few things I want to say. We got 111 right there. That's pretty wild. But yeah, it's like they they are so heavy on that rebellion. So it's like the Saturn really goes against that. Uh, this is also Aquarius's house. So yeah, they are very good with like their friendships and their groups, uh, their community. But it's like, it's really weird where it's like, I feel like they can really, again, they struggle a lot with like authority in like older type figures where they honestly, like they think the worst of them. Uh, but it's like, they, they have, they have goodness in them for sure. It's like, they, they care a lot. And it's like a lot of times their heroism kind of goes unnoticed. Um, unless to those who are really paying attention. So it's like, again, it's, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? The description of like what they're, and they would be astrology. I think I was talking about, they have an interest in astrology. They might even want to do something like that. Like that's like a bigger dream of theirs where it's like, they would like to be like an astronaut or like a physicist or something. Uh, cause it just interests them. Science, I think actually interests them quite a bit, but you would never expect it because they don't really share that because again, everybody kind of thinks of them as this kind of jokey, nonsensical in some ways kind of rebellious chill dude that they don't expect the more serious side that's in them so i feel like they kind of struggle with showing that uh especially because they've always had this struggle with again these authority figures it's so such a such a crazy pile already uh so moving along here we got the lion which I feel like is very much their totem animal. So with the lion, this is fire energy. So talking about the lion. It is a uh, patient, regal, a complete master. The lion is a master of the fire element and the living mascot of self-transformation. A lion personality dictates their life to personal and spiritual growth. This dedication inspires some and intimidates others. Therefore, the lion is respected by all, but known intimately by few. Exactly. Some mistake the lion as hard to access or aloof. Yet those with a keener eye know better. Lions are observant, uh, stealthy, and precise in their words and actions. They do not waste energy or resources. This card reminds us that self-mastery is available to all, no matter where our guests are. Uh, quest begins exactly so that's what i that's what i'm feeling it's like your soulmate they're so they have this mask down hardcore it's like it is a part of their personality don't get me wrong but it's like yeah it's like you don't realize what is really happening like how much like how much more serious and dedicated they really are underneath things and it's like really kind of profound when you get them alone and like you start talking to them and you realize there's like so much more to this person than what you initially thought as like this, you know, jokey kind of non-serious kind of dude. But it's like, there's, there's way more happening there. There's more ambition and dreams and just everything happening underneath the surface that you would never have expected. So when in balance, the lion is the epitome of peace and strength. When out of balance, withdrawn and too serious, how to bring into balance is through daily meditation and friendship. Friendship matters so much to your soulmate. They care so much about their friends. And again, they would do anything for their friends. So we also have for the archetype here, we have the child magical. So light attributes of seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things. The belief that everything is possible. Shadow attributes of pessimism, depression, and disbelief in miracles. Believing that energy and action are not required for growth. Yeah, I feel like they've, they've, they struggle a lot between those uh, two polarities right there. So for their energy right now, which again might also represent like your energy. Because again, this is your soulmate. So you guys are going to kind of resonate the same energies. We have the goddess of the moon coming out in the reverse. 
So this is definitely going to be a call to get in touch with the, this is maybe what they're struggling with right now is getting in touch with that inner feminine aspect. And that's also why we have the chariot coming out because that's ruled by, again, cancer and the moon. So with this, this is, what is it? Card 52, excuse me. It is card 52. So, this has to do with intuition. So, uh, when this card is reversed, blocked intuition, an inner disconnect, or a sense of living in the dark. You have a deep desire to know your purpose and truth, but they can feel very distant. This is a message of dissatisfaction where your inner life is concerned. Uh, yeah, I feel like internally they're, they're going through this right now. It's possible that extreme worry and discontent are the obstacles to the inner peace and wisdom you seek. If so, you need to let that go and renew your faith in yourself and your eternal spirit. Get out of your own way and release the fear that's blocking the truth of your blessed eternal nature. Your soul, your higher self knows you best. So allow stillness into your life. Listen to the stirring of your own intuitive voice and trust what you receive. Exactly. So lastly, because of course I pulled for the gods and time deck for this because again, these characters are demigods. And I think I didn't mention that Percy, um, his godly father is of course Poseidon. So what we have here is really interesting. We got Thor with action. Uh, wow. So, talking about Thor, let's see what it has to say. So, with this, the time has now passed for waiting and inertia. Real action is necessary. Trust that you are protected and supported while you move forward. We can call upon Thor when we need some real action. He is a brilliant rut buster, someone who will forcefully make action happen. If we feel inertia, tiredness, or frustration that things are not happening how we want, call upon Thor and his mighty hammer to smash a way through. Getting caught in a cycle of negative thought or behavior often, lead, uh, often needs forceful action as we get comfortable with our lives, even when they are unhealthy. Thor is protective of his own, so we can feel safe knowing that he might, uh, his might will shield us as we move forward into the unknown. Thor is also a poet, not just an action man, so you can take a more sensitive route, even if you are the masculine type. Follow Thor's lead and be the best of both worlds. So the shadow attributes is sometimes taking forceful action isn't the most prudent path. Thor himself found his route didn't always guarantee the best outcome. Coming into a sensitive situation ready for a fight or even just a negotiate, um, negative reaction may end badly for all. Ask questions and be aware of when a situation needs a gentler approach and when force is actually a good in, uh, instrument. The male energy tends to be one of action, but too much action can also deplete one's energy and vitality. Action must be balanced with rest and rejuvenation and definitely the element of the feminine. So, whew, there's a lot to say with that one. So, with that said, that is everything I'm seeing here for this pile. So, if this resonated, definitely do let me know. Comment down below. If you do not want to miss any future uploads, definitely do turn on the subscription and bell icon. And if you guys would like to help support this channel and get access to a bunch of other additional content, please do check out my Patreon link down below in the description. So, thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, for those who picked... The fifth and final pile here with the emerald calcite. We're going to go ahead and see who came out to represent your particular soulmate. So we have for you guys, we have Leo. So with Leo coming out to represent your particular soulmate, we are talking about soulmate who is, you know, very easygoing, very mischievous, but upbeat, energetic, a little bit eccentric, funny, definitely a very, very flirty, and loves to tell jokes constantly. So if you don't love all those things, this is not going to be the soulmate for you. 
Um, they could definitely be seen as a bit of a troublemaker because they have that mischievous intent. Um, they are a very, very intelligent and honest person. Um, they can have a tendency though to kind of not think before they react and, you know, really enjoy kind of pulling pranks on people. And so sometimes they don't think those pranks through all the way, I feel like, where sometimes it's like, oh yeah, this could be so funny, but then like somebody could maybe get a little bit hurt, either like a little bit of like a physical boo-boo or definitely maybe like an emotional boo-boo sometimes because they can just get a little bit too caught up in the fun of it um, to really kind of think through what they're doing. Like, eh, maybe stop for a moment and consider just a little bit, okay? Uh, but yeah, even though they do have this, uh, sometimes though, that humor that they like to project and they do all the time is actually really a means of really hiding deeper hurt and anger um, sometimes, especially because, you know, if they've gone through some difficult things, they definitely could have been um, in a situation where they only had a single parent through life. So it's like they kind of use comedy and this mischievousness as a way to cover up for what they were feeling internally. Uh, they definitely have a very uh, serious side to them. They're also extremely skilled um, and serious about whatever they do for their work. Um, they're very um, ingenious. They're very good with their hands. So they could do a lot of stuff in crafting, whether that's with mechanical um, objects. Because obviously we're talking about demigods here. He is the son of Hephaestus. Uh, so again, anything in that realm would definitely fall in line. Um, they also do have a bit of like a leadership quality, whether they realize it or not, they can step into that leadership role, but it's in a very kind of like fun way. I feel like they are incredibly brave and selfless as well because they will sacrifice themselves to kind of help others and inspire others, especially through, um, really tough times. They're definitely... When it comes to the love department, they can fall in love very frequently, but that also leads to a lot of frequent heartbreak for them. They can, I feel like in some ways it's like they can pour their heart out to, you know, whoever they're pursuing at a time, but it's like they kind of have this reputation of being this flirtatious person, this kind of Casanova um, aspect that a lot of people maybe when they are serious romantically, they don't actually take them seriously, which again, leads to heartbreak. Um, and you know, and because of that, it's like, they can sometimes feel a little bit like an outcast. Uh, you, it could be also possible that your particular soulmate, uh, might really be into the color red specifically. Well, let's see what all their, um, information we can get here. So... What do we got here? We have the Four of Wands. Interesting. We also have the Three of Wands. Successive cards. Look at that. We also have the Two of Pentacles. We got a lot of ship ener uh, imagery. And then the Nine of Wands. So, yeah. They're, they withstand the fight. They will keep pursuing their goals and their ambitions because I do feel like they have really big ambitions, especially creatively as um, within their own personal craft. Uh, they could definitely uh, live around water or they maybe they've done some work with ships or maybe they even worked in like the military. Um, engineering is coming to mind. They could do stuff in engineering, especially for like maybe the military. Um, they need to make sure that they keep themselves balanced and they don't take on more than they can chew but because they have a tendency to just keep pushing through even when like physically they should really take a break um but especially with the four of wands it's like yeah they they like to celebrate they like events they like graduations they could be even graduating um but yeah it's like they would like to get married someday um, but it's just a matter of finding somebody who's going to actually take them seriously when it comes to their romantic side. Because again, they're so flirtatious that a lot of times people don't take them seriously, like their romantic partners, um, which is kind of disappointing. 
So we also have here, we have appreciation with moon in Leo. And we have Saturn in Capricorn with riches. I feel like they're destined, if they haven't already achieved this, they're definitely destined to make quite a bit of money. I'm just going to say that. I feel like they have some really big goals in mind. And like through their inventiveness and through their skills and their craft, it's like, yeah, they can really create some amazing riches for themselves. That is kind of unexpected. So delving more into that. So we're going to talk about the moon in Leo. So with that, it says, when this card appears in a reading, it indicates a powerful need for recognition in some aspect of life. There may be a feeling of those around are not responding appreciatively enough, provoking an unhelpful over-the-top response. The card also indicates emotional dependency on a partner or close friends. Positively, if the card does not refer to the questioner, it can portray someone popular, generous, and much admired by others. So I feel like, yes, like your soulmate could definitely have a reputation like this where it's like they are kind of popular. They're definitely generous. They are admired, especially for their skills and their ingenuity. But I also feel like a part of that is like they need to feel needed and so it's like when they are not getting that appreciation for like their skills or something that they've done, it can put them in kind of a sour mood. So events are a lavish occasion, theoretical events, or excuse me, the theatrical events, uh, children's performance, pride in achievement, short-lived fame, excessive dramatic behavior, family party or gathering. Yeah, they, they want to have... I feel like they're very much about trying to, like, build up a family, especially, like, a network of family that is, like, they're through friends that become, like, close, like, blood family in a sense. Bleh. I'm, like, tripping over my words. Oh, okay. So, let's also talk about the Saturn. So, with the Saturn in Capricorn... This is, when the richest card appears in a reading, it usually points towards the successful conclusion of a financial arrangement or deal. So events are the stock market, dealings with government organizations, involvement in politics, receiving an honor of some kind. It's like, yeah, they are definitely destined for some recognition. And yes, they could definitely do either some work with government, whether they're a contractor or whatnot. There's definitely an aspect of that here. Uh, with their talents. So let's also look at some more information here. And so we have moon with feeling. They do have a deeper emotional um, aspect to them. Their mother is extremely important to them emotionally. So instinct, nurturing, gut reactions, comfort, digestion, home, family, conditioning, habits, femininity, lineage, privacy, embodiment, emotions, sustenance, self-soothing, moods, and mother. We also have Capricorn, the boss. Yep, a lot of earth energy coming out. Serious, authoritative, ambitious, realistic, structured, traditional, wise, enduring, accomplished, badass, majestic, competent, prepared, down-to-earth, corporate, re um, reserved, rigid, and disciplined. And we also have Virgo. Again, total heavy earth energy. Methodical, aligned, ritualistic, efficient, insightful, healthy, dutiful, Discerning, witchy, subtle, pure, refined, accurate, solitary, curatorial, critical, nervous, and perfectionist. They are perfectionists when it comes to their work. They take their reputation extremely serious. They, they really want to make a name for themselves through their skills and through their craft. Like that matters so, so much to them. Because um, they really want to make something of themselves. We also have here, <laughs> makes a lot of sense. We got the peacock. Yeah, they're a bit showy. It's like they want to be noticed. They want to be seen. Um, they want to be admired and appreciated. So with the peacock, let's go ahead and see more about that. Where is the peacock in this book? Here we go. So inner beauty, compassion, a simulation of, every, of anything. The beauty of the peacock is unrivaled. It's easy to think it comes from the plumage, but the secret of the peacock is that the beauty resides within and extends outward indefinitely. This adept creature can assimilate or digest. It's interesting. We have that word digest coming up more than once. 
huh interesting digest why is digest important their health might be um a big emphasis for them maybe they even like suffer from some sort of like allergy that affects their digestion maybe like a gluten intolerance something like that they're, again they, they're definitely eccentric like i get the sense of like a mad genius kind of type um but anyway they're very but they're also very sensitive which makes sense of why digest because a lot of really like psychically sensitive people often will have like allergies of different types so anyway um, assimilate or digest all experiences in life so it does not harbor resentment, conflict, or past pain within its psyche. The peacock type is extremely rare. Not many of us have reached this advanced level of acceptance of the self and others. So when in balance, your soulmate is definitely extremely confident and kind. When they're out of balance, they can't digest situations. To bring into balance, they need to meditate on the navel. So next up we also have <laughs> we have the saboteur so light attributes of highlights your fear of self-empowerment and the changes it would bring to your life shy attributes of induces self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others so I've, yeah that makes sense i also feel like this literally could refer to the kind of work that they do even in the sense of like within this government situation this is what i keep going back to if it's like yeah, they might even work in kind of like some top secret kind of stuff where it's like they create things that are to be used for like sabotage or for like intel collecting. So we also have here for their energy that they're currently working in, which also can represent the energy you're currently working in and kind of dealing with. We have the angel of balance. So it's like for them, yeah, they really, really need to work on finding that balance, inner balance. So this is card 48. So with this energy, uh, being centered and self-honoring in your choices, this loving present holds a picture of liquid light in front of the pyramids, reminding you that a strong destiny relies on a solid foundation of personal balance and emotional equanimity. Although things may have been out of sync in the past, this card is telling you that a greater equilibrium is now coming to your life. Remain conscious about how you are balancing your goals and your physical and emotional energy as well. Whenever you feel yourself getting off center or losing focus, call upon this beautiful angel and bring her intention into your heart center. Your intuition will lead you in the right direction and the angel will guide you to a peaceful and centered approach. Nice. So, and lastly, because I wanted to pull from, again, the gods and time deck, especially because we're talking about demigods, we got Achilles with confidence. They definitely have a lot of confidence. Um, well, actually, I should say, it's most of the time, it seems like they have a lot of confidence. They're definitely extremely confident in their, um, their actual, like, physical skills and abilities, but I feel like they kind of lack confidence when it comes to the more emotional aspect, and, like, again, romantically, while they might flirt a lot, they might put on that, uh, Casanova persona, I feel like internally, they really kind of don't have a lot of confidence, uh, romantically speaking, where it's, like, they're really unsure if, like, they're doing the right thing, are they saying the right thing? They worry a lot about that because it's like they do genuinely want good relationships, but sometimes it's just like um, they end up falling for the wrong people is what I'm getting a lot of the times. So with Achilles, it says, you are strong, worthy, and confident. Step forward and courage knowing you can achieve exactly what you desire. Achilles may stride into your life when you need a confidence boost. Achilles walked around confident in his skills, wrapped in invisible armor that strengthened and protected him. We all need this. Know that you are worthy and capable and you have the strength and smarts to do what it is that you need to do. You may need to grow your self-esteem from the inside out rather than relying on others for your confidence. Know that you are enough. Believe in yourself and you too will have armor that keeps you safe. The shadow side here is while understanding heroism and confidence is a great strength, overconfidence can be a weakness. 
Overconfidence can breed an attitude of arrogance and a disregard for others' feelings or needs. We must learn to balance self-assurance with empathy. As though as through it was through Achilles' one small vulnerability that he became human. We can argue that it was his overconfidence and his skills that opened up that weak spot to danger. It's important that we are confident, but also that we acknowledge that we are human and can make mistakes. We all have a vulnerability, and by acknowledging this, we can avoid the shadow side of Achilles. So yeah, I feel like your soulmate, they struggle with that. They struggle with the confidence, where it's like the confidence is both their greatest strength and also their greatest weakness at the same time. It, they definitely have some form of an Achilles heel somewhere in their life in some way. Just expect that and expect to realize it and see it at some point uh, through the relationship. It doesn't necessarily mean they're like, again, it's not like, like a romantic deal breaker or anything like that but everybody comes with their achilles heel with their weaknesses and for them it's definitely centered around their their confidence which is uh it's interesting it's like they can they can definitely be overconfident in thinking about their when it comes to their ideas and their skills which i feel like if they're not careful, it can lead them to really making a really grand fucking mistake that could really hurt them in the future. So I feel like hopefully for you guys, um, you'll meet this soulmate before that happens to them and kind of help to guide them away from that, I feel like. But ultimately, you know, they will learn their lesson whenever it needs to be. And if they can't avoid that lesson, they don't listen. Well, it was the lesson they were meant to learn. That's just how I feel, uh, what I'm getting off the cards here. So with that said, that is everything I'm seeing here. Uh, actually, yeah, that makes so much sense now because I just realized it because, again, we have the saboteur here. It's like, yeah, I feel like they can accidentally fucking sabotage their life by their overconfidence. Um, something along those lines. Like they, they are destined to make a big fuck up that they're going to learn deeply from, whether that already happens before you meet them or when you start the relationship with them, it's like they're going to make a big old fuck up. That is going to really greatly fucking teach them a lesson about confidence. Um, so, with that said, again, everything I'm seeing here for this pile, thank you all so much for watching. And again, if you do not want to miss any future uploads, please do uh, turn on the bell notification and subscribe so you don't miss that. And if you'd like to help support this channel and its continued growth, please do consider checking out my Patreon, which will give you exclusive access to a ton of additional goodies, um, more additional pick a cards, as well as uh, Pisces podcasts, personal readings, and artwork. So thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one.